Ahoy! Today I'd like to introduce you to what is currently my personal favorite weapon in New World, and that is the Sword and Shield. Now this may surprise you because I was previously a Great Axe Hatchet user, but this weapon is just great in its current state. I started picking up the Sword and Shield in the open beta after its buffs and I've learned to love it both in PvP as an aggressive weapon and in PvE as a tank weapon. I hope that after this video you'll love it as much as I do. So how does the Sword and Shield in New World feel? First of all it has some of the best tracking in the game which makes it very easy to hunt down enemies in PvP since you can stick to them like glue. Since New World uses both blocking and dodging, the combat with the shield is quite engaging. In PvE you will often still find yourself blocking, especially if you're running heavy armor, but you can also run medium armor builds where you focus more on dodging boss attacks. Both is absolutely possible with the sword and shield and there are different shields to facilitate that choice. Surprisingly, especially in PvP, it can also deal quite a lot of damage. Now I wouldn't necessarily run it as a PvE DPS weapon choice, but for PvP you have a lot of punish mechanics that can be very useful when you want to put as much damage on an enemy as possible. At the same time the abilities of the sword are relatively simplistic and easy to learn. They damage, they have crowd control or they reduce the damage that you take. One unique benefit of the sword for PvE is that it actually utilizes all types of damage. The light attack is slashing, the heavy attack is a thrust, and the abilities using the shields are strike damage. This is great since it means that the sword and shield can be used effectively in every dungeon. The sword and shield primarily scales with strength and secondary with dexterity. This makes it flexible in terms of weapon combinations, but in either case you want to run a lot of constitution if you are planning to tank. The two skill trees of the sword and shield are Swordmaster and Defender. Swordmaster has damaging and mobility abilities and focuses a lot on cooldown resets, especially when hitting multiple enemies. You also increase your allies damage by using this tree. The defender tree on the other hand focuses on crowd control mechanics and damage reduction. Almost every perk in this tree here will reduce the damage that you take somehow. Now let's talk a little bit about the strength and weaknesses of this weapon. The sword actually has decent mobility because the leap that it has is very very fast. It doesn't have the best long term mobility, but there are some other perks that can with the right effects increase your mobility as well. The shield also offers one of the best blocks in the game. That is because it not only allows you to block melee attacks, but also ranged attacks. There are some other items with very strong block mechanics, but none of them block ranged projectiles. Since the right skill tree also have two abilities that taunt, one single target and one AoE, it is excellent for PvE tanking. Generally the sword and shield is a very well-rounded weapon. It also has some downsides though. All of the ability cooldowns on the sword and shield are extremely long. There are ways to work around this, but the default cooldowns are still somewhat odd and I don't quite know why they are this long. A lot of the abilities are also very slow and telegraphed. This can especially be a problem if you're trying to deal with kiting enemies. In my personal opinion, a lot of the Swordmaster perks, especially those not linked to an ability, are also a bit underwhelming. They require very specific circumstances to be effective and require enemies to play badly in order to even be applicable, which means even when you're going aggressive in terms of build and playstyle, you're still likely to put a lot of your skill points into Defender. When it comes to weapon pairings for the shield, the world is your oyster. Since the sword scales with both strength and dexterity, almost anything is possible. In the strength area, the Great Axe Hatchet and Warhammer are all excellent pairings for the Sword and Shield. The Great Axe is something I would especially prefer in PvP, whereas I love the Warhammer in PvE. But you can also run a melee dexterity build in combination with the Rapier or the Spear, in which case you're going to be dodging and blocking a lot and just avoiding tons and tons of damage while switching between the weapons frequently. But by extension, you can even use a bow or a musket with the sword and shield and use this as a safety option. Likewise, you can use it with the life staff for a paladin type of build or just as a healer and use it to save yourself from any engaging enemy because you have good crowd control and damage reduction in the defender skill tree. Now we will have a look at how the individual abilities work and then also talk about a leveling order. The first ability in the Swordmaster tree is Whirling Blade. This is an AoE attack with a small range of 2 meters, dealing 145% weapon damage on a 15 seconds cooldown. 
With perks, it can also apply a 5% rend to enemies and reduce the cooldown when hitting multiple enemies. The second ability is Reverse Stab. This is a longer animation attack which deals 175% weapon damage with a 20 seconds cooldown and is much less AoE focused but can still hit multiple targets. Upgraded, this can have Grit which makes it uninterruptible and also can reduce all of your skills cooldowns when hitting enemies. The third ability is Leaping Strike. This is a 6 meter leap that is extremely fast and deals 135% weapon damage. The hitbox of this ability is relatively small and pointing forward, so it's not that easy to hit. It has a 25 seconds cooldown. The first skill in the Defender Tree is Shield Rush, a 5 meter charge forward that is relatively slow because you kind of go backwards first and deals 125 weapon damage to an enemy hit. It has a 20 seconds cooldown and can apply multiple debuffs to enemies around the hit target when upgraded. The second ability is Shield Bash, which deals 50% weapon damage, but as far as I'm aware, weapon damage of the shield, and stuns enemies in front of you for 2 seconds. If you have a Taunt Gem, this also taunts all enemies hit by it, and has a 25 seconds cooldown. Upgrading it increases the damage, threat generation, and the duration of the stun. The third ability is Defiant Stance. This reduces the incoming damage that you take by 30% for 8 seconds, and is also an AoE taunt if you have a Taunt Gem. If you upgrade this, you can reduce the damage reduction further at high health and get some of your health back when the ability ends. This has a 45 seconds cooldown, so you really want to use it in the right moment. Now, let's talk about leveling the sword. We are on nwdb here, nwdb.info. You should check it out. They have all the skill trees and they're all as updated as they can be. As of now, I would recommend that even if you're going full tank, and this is going to be a full tank build, and the first few levels, you probably still want to level these. That is because you just have a quicker clear time in early game if you're leveling the weapon early. Uh, you're not going to have any issues tanking the monsters anyways. So unless you're running a five-man group from the start, there really isn't much of a reason to have the defensive skills right away. Just use these three, level them up a little bit, go down here, go down here, whatever you want to want do until then. Uh, just so you can level the weapon more quickly. You can maybe even level it in PvP, which gives you a lot more weapon mastery. Uh, and get to the point where you can actually effectively tank, because if you don't have any of the other perks, you can't tank all that well anyways. If you must, and or if you're running in a five-man comp, you can obviously start out like this as well. Most of the time, it's not as effective, in my opinion, because you're just missing some things as well. Um, you, for example, don't have a taunt gem yet, so the taunt effect isn't there, and really, you don't need defined stance to tank early monsters all the time. And before you have the skills, it's not really worth tanking anyways. And once you have a few more points, this is not the ideal order. So instead, what I want you to do is reset your skills and start with Sturdy Grip. So obviously you, you do this when you have enough points to initially get all of the skills that you want. You're not doing that just with this skill. Sturdy Grip gives you a 15% damage reduction to your stamina while blocking against melee attacks. And most of the time, especially in PvE, but also in PvP, you'll be hit by melee attacks. You want to get Shield Bash, which is your main Taunt and CC tool, which is uh, on a 25 second cooldown. And you want to get Defiant Stance, which is on a longer cooldown of 45 seconds, uh, which reduces the damage that you take and also taunts enemies. So you have two taunts here. But Shield Rush itself is just not that impactful most of the time. If you have a very specific control comp, uh, where you're going to have Weaken and you want to potentially have the AoE slow in, in Wars, then Shield Rush is advisable. But if you're playing in a dungeon, for example, I don't see much benefit in that that often compared to the other option. It's still good. Weaken is still great. But uh, we are looking at something else here. So instead, we're going to do Empowered Stab here, which increases uh, your attack damage after... Or it gives you Empower after a heavy attack, which is relevant in PvE. In PvE, you'll use heavy attacks. And it's a 30% Empower, so that's quite strong. It's like a fair bit more damage and also aggro that way. And then you're going to get Reverse Stab. This is a damaging skill that deals 175% weapon damage as a 20 second cooldown. Seems weird so far, it'll make sense in a second. Now you want to get Unstoppable Stab, um, which gives it Grit. Actually not that important for us, we just need to get down here. We want to get Opportunist because it's the only one that actually unlocks it here. And then you want to get Tactician. On successful hit with Reverse Stab, all sword cooldowns are reduced by 25%. Now, as of the current version of the game, this applies multiple times with multiple enemies, so you can basically full reset your cooldowns. I have a feeling that by release that is going to be changed, that is going to be fixed, nerfed, whatever, 
so that it only applies once, no matter how many targets you hit, but it's still a 25% cooldown reduction even if they do that, which is very, very impactful on both of these abilities, both your CC and your damage reduction, which are both taunts as well. And in my opinion, this is often more important than getting the weaken effect. Depends on the exact situation, of course. But especially in PvE, I would personally prefer this. Now, if this gets drastically nerfed, that may no longer be the case, or if this skill gets entirely overhauled. But if it just gets reduced to once per ability usage, and instead of every single target, I think it would still be a very strong ability to have. Along with that, we now can get some more skills in here. So one skill that I would get is Final Countdown, which increases your damage reduction further, because that brings us to Recuperation, and this is a skill, skill that you absolutely want to have. All incoming healing regeneration is increased by 10%. Your healer will absolutely love you for having this skill. Please do it. It's, it's fantastic. And you can get Restoration here eventually as well, if, if you want some more uh, region from that, but it's not necessarily the first thing you have to do. Another thing that you can most certainly go down is uh, Intimidating Bash. This increases the threat generation and the damage of the ability, which in combination is great in my opinion. And I do like the extra one second stun duration on Concussive Bash. This is especially nice if you want to at least PvP a little bit in PvE. It may not be that important, but sometimes it can be nice to just like disable the ranged character for quite a while while you take care of others. So yeah, it's not bad to have it either for sure. And then there are some other skills that I would recommend. One with the shield, giving you a skill real charge or cooldown reduction basically of 1% every time you block. Uh, this can stack up quite well, quite nicely, so that is definitely recommendable. Final blow can be nice if you have aggro issues, but because it increases your threat generation, but most of the time I don't think you'll actually need it. Then I think all of these skills are pretty nice. One that I really like, that I would I recommend building relatively early, is defensive training, probably actually before one with the shield. Um, this one reduces your damage taken further because you get the fortify effect. And then after that, it really depends. Like for example, uh, if you want to PvP a little bit, Invigorating Bulwark is great. You can still get this for Shield Bash, you get some stamina back, but you may not necessarily need it. Uh, I like Sturdy Shield, I like having some extra armor, um, and then I want to get Defensive Formation. This gives you an AoE damage reduction for allies of 30%. So it's a relatively small radius, but it's enough for them to just group up with you and get the reduction. And in some situations, it can be very, very effective. At this point, you are flexible. You can, for example, put a point uh, into elemental resistance. You could put a point into high grip uh, if you want to have ranged block as well. Or you could also put a point over here into uh, mobility. I like that a lot. So you can move faster while blocking. I think that's great. Uh, you can put your point into restoration if you want to help your healer a little bit with that, or you can say, okay, I'm just not going to take as much damage in the first place when I'm blocking ranged attacks, so that's up to you. But I think this is a great combination. Now before launch I thought we would see some changes by launch, but it seems like we didn't get any changes at all, or at least they were not announced. So you can absolutely use this build as is right now. Now, if you're after a more aggressive build, a damaging build, I have a bit of a meme 1v1 PvP build that I'm going to be running for a while. So if you're interested in that, I'm going to link that at the top. I made that a while ago. It's a combination of Great Axe and Sword and Shield that I really enjoy. And on the topic of enjoying, if you enjoyed this, I have a ton of other weapon guides that are all in a playlist that are linked at the end and will also be linked right here probably. So if you want to learn more about other weapons, I have the Hatchet, the Life Staff and the Great Egg so far. And there are going to be more guides of the next days for the other weapons. The Spear and Fire Staff are already in the works. If you really enjoyed this info, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you get updated of other videos in the future. And of course, the other weapon guides as well. If you have any questions, feel free to hop over on my Twitch and Discord, both will be linked down below. Thank you very much for watching, I hope to see you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.